journalist and a writer with over 100 journalistic and academic publications in African, popular and new traditional music. He has given many radio and television broadcasts, including over 40 for the BBC. And in 1978, he wrote and presented the BBC's first ever five-part series of radio programs on African popular music called In the African Groove. Have any ideas yet? Okay, maybe when we also get into his music, you probably might be able to recognize him. He was a film consultant and facilitator working for the BBC and currently is a lecturer at the University of Ghana Music Department. Ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to welcome to the studio this morning, Professor Edmond John Quisi Collins. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I had to add the question just so that you will be complete, right? <laughs> How are you doing? It's good Fine. to see you, Prof. Let's go into your music a little bit and then we'll get to our conversations. Keep listening to 99.7 Joy FM. Another day is the title of this one. I'm sure you probably have a snippet of it elsewhere, but it's only because people have sampled it a couple of times. It's from his Boko Beats album. He played this with the Boko band. Professor John Collins is with us in the studio this morning. He's our special studio guest. And of course, if you have any questions ahead, you can send it. 0244-340-437. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag Cosmopolitan Mix. So anyways, we'll probably have to start from the very beginning. And for the benefit of our listeners, and of course, um, for my good friend Jupiter, whom I hope is listening right now, I'm dedicating this show to you because I'm sure there'll be a lot of lessons on high life that you probably would like to learn today. So good morning, Jupiter. And for all of you who are listening this morning, this one is for you. You just want to stay close to your radio. Like I said, there are a lot of lessons to be learned this morning. So we'd just like to find out exactly who Professor Collins is. Where were you born? Where did you grow up? Okay, I was born in London at the en end of the Second World War. So I was nearly bombed to death a couple of times <laughs> by the Germans. Um, came to Ghana first in 1952 with my parents because mm -hmm. my father helped set up the philosophy department at Legon. Right. And then my mother took me back to England and I came back to Ghana in 1969. Right. And I've been here ever since. How old were you when you came back? 
about 23. Oh, you had finished university and everything? Yeah, I got one degree in science before right. I came, and then right. I did another degree here in archaeology and sociology. Right. But I was already a guitarist. I, w- I, w- I would never be without my guitar. Exactly. So uh, because of that, it's led me to many adventures. And, right. Yeah. And um, what, when, when you were growing up in England, what were you looking forward to doing with your life? What did you want to be? Actually, originally I wanted to be a doctor. Mm-hmm. But I tried working in a, in a hospital, and I, I didn't like the regimented lifestyle of a hospital. Right. Um, so I sort of got halfway through that mm-hmm. degree, but it was very useful for me because in Ghana I've actually delivered two children. Wow. In emergencies, of course. Right. I actually knew how to do it. Super. Uh, um, anyway, um, but I made a complete switch when I came to, to Ghana. Ghana. I decided to study political science, archaeology, which I've always been interested in. At the history. University of Ghana. Yeah, yeah. Right. I was an undergraduate. Right, there. right. And, I, and sociology. Right. But nothing to do with music. No? No. I was. Um, it was a hobby. You just like to play your guitar. Yeah, so I joined so many bands that right. in, in Ghana and Nigeria and right. so on. Right. Um, um, at, at what age did you start playing your guitar? Did you teach yourself or you had to take lessons to learn that? Um, not really. I, I was taught the violin mm-hmm. at, the un- at, at school. Mm-hmm. And I f- again, I, I, I found it too regimented. Or it was learning scales. There was no fun it in it. It looks like you don't want to be in the box all the time. No, you don't I'm like a, your freedom. I'm an anarchist, basically, <laughs> yes. a, a social anarchist. Right. And so what I did is that uh, I got a guitar and immediately found that you could sit around with playing three chords and you could form a band. Right. And, it, and, and in fact, I made my first guitar. My first two, two guitars, I actually made them myself. Wow. Um, so I found it very a friendly instrument. And um, then I joined a rock band, a jazz band in New- Britain before I came mm-hmm. to Ghana. Mm-hmm. But I didn't play high life. My, I'd been exposed to high life a little bit through my father. Um, but I sort of learned high life on the road with a band called the Jaguar Jokers. I was their guitarist in 1969 wow. to, when I was a student at Legon. And then later, people like Kwao Mensa, Ike Nyami, uh, sat down and really taught me, mm-hmm. particularly Kwao Mensa. Kwao he was Mensa. a very good friend of mine. Right. Um, so I, in the end, I, I got to the point where I could play palm wine music. <laughs> and in 1995, mm-hmm. I introduced palm wine music guitar into Legon. Wow. And there was a resistance. I was actually hoping you would bring your guitar this morning so uh, you could play a couple of things for thought, us. Yeah, yeah, you didn't. Because yeah. I thought that you couldn't live without it, you know, so. The, well, I can now, but that was when. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to yeah. live without it now. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And um, tell us a little bit about, you know, you coming to Ghana as a young boy and then as a student and trying to discover Ghanaian music. It, How did that happen? Yeah, it was serendipity. What happened is my father uh, had divorced my mother, married um, a, a gym lady who lived in Adwajiri. My father even built her a house. So when I went to meet my stepmother, my auntie Amma, one of the tenants in the house was the leader of the Jaguar Jokers. Right. I'd only just landed in Ghana about two or three weeks. I hadn't even started at Legon. And I was carrying the guitar, so that immediately resulted in going on trek with them. Mm-hmm. So I, I spent, as I said, about two or three years during my holidays trekking to small villages with a, it's a, a guitar band, a concert mm-hmm. party. Right. They wanted me to act, but I only played the guitar for them because I can't act. All right. And um, that's how it started. And then I... Um, it, it, it was serendipity. I wasn't planning to become a musician, no. but it, everything o- opened up for me in Ghana. And then, I was, as I was traveling around Ghana, meeting different musicians, and also going to Nigeria and Liberia, I kept notes about these amazing people, mm-hmm. and then discovered that nobody had written their histories Ooh. in Ghana. Very few people. Only uh, I think F. W. Sutherland and Atana, Professor Atana Mensa and Professor Bami were the only. Ghanaians when I got to Ghana first in 1969 mm-hmm. who'd done any work at all on popular music in Ghana. Right. It was completely looked down upon at the, by the university at right. that time. Right. Even they didn't want me to teach palm wine guitar. Of, of course they wanted they me to teach jazz or <laughs> classical. And I said, well, you can go to Europe or America for that. But let's learn our own. Yeah, yeah. Now we have oh. over 100 students. You know, so right. I'm quite proud of that. I know it's yeah. a, it was a good beginning, and we're glad that you know you kept it alive, or else he probably would have been dead by now. But tell us yeah. a little bit about those notes that you started writing about the villages, the people, the music, and everything that you were picking up at that time. Well, I mean, for about the first two or three years, mm-hmm. I didn't really. I just w- I was doing it all for fun. Right. But then I started to keep notes and me- memorabilia, photographs, 
Um, so around about mid-1970s, mm -hmm. I had enough information to start putting some histories together and biographies. Right. And in fact, the first biography I ever wrote was E.T. Mensa. I'd been at a, ba a band with one of his singers called Alouet. Um, and so I met the, o they called him the old man. Right. And I just, again, serendipity, uh, E.T. by that time was just at that stage in his life where he wanted some to write his biography. Right. So I happened to turn up and we wrote his biography. Wow. So and you were the first person to have written E.T. Mensa's biography. Yes. Right. And also E.K., Kwao Mensa, and then the Jaguar Jokers. Then I went to Nigeria, did the same with Fela, Victor Owaifu. And How then long were you in Nigeria for to have hanged out with Fela and all of them? That was in the same time. I was playing in a band with Faisal Hawani, one Hawani. of his bands. So right. through Faisal was a very good friend of Fela. And so there were two bands, Basa Basa and Bunzus. Mm -hmm. I played with one of them. So we ended up by being the support bands for Fela at the Africa Shrine right. in 1974. Right. And then I worked with Fela on his Black President film. I got to know him quite well because through Faisal, Either in and he was coming to Ghana a lot, fella, and we were going to Nigeria a lot. Right. So that's how that happened. So you wrote E.T.'s biography and then several others, and yeah. then you wrote and that King, for and, and King Bruce too. And King Bruce too. Yeah. Wow. I used to borrow in, when I was running the Bokor band. Uh -huh. I used to borrow. I was living in Jamestown. Right. And I used to borrow or hire instruments from him. Right. So this later on we, we became friends, right. and I also wrote his biography. Right. So basically. At the time when you came to Ghana, you came in, you know, you also wanted to study at the university at the same time. You started playing with the Jaguar Jokers. Yeah. And um, at that time, when you started playing with all these bands and going to Nigeria, you you were a complete musician at that time, or you were doing work in the university as well. Um, after What happened after the university is that... Uh, in fact, when I uh, after my BA, I mm -hmm. wanted to do an MA in high life, right. and I was forbidden. Why? Because they said it was a subject unworthy of academic pursuit. Sure. I mean, yeah, that's what, uh, or, and that they didn't have the teachers to supervise me. That was their excuse, and that was my. It saved me because it got me out of the university system. Okay. So I then. I was actually teaching at GIS physics and chemistry. That's how I was earning my daily bread. You're kidding. Yeah. And then um, in the, uh, I would take a, a, a siesta in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and then the rest of the day would be devoted to playing music. Right. And I, I set up Bokor Band. Mm -hmm. I ran it for about five, six, seven years, took it even to Britain to, at one point, right. and then came back and set up recording, a recording studio. Mm -hmm. And that's re where I learned everything. I, 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 don't, I don't think I could have learned any much in the university no. at that time. But then by the mid-1990s, the university had realized that they need to, to have high life and popular music studies. Mm -hmm. And luckily, I'd got a PhD in America by that time. And so you that's were, how I yeah, so brought that into the music department. You were brought to into the yeah. music department to do it. And that's when I brought the guitar. I wasn't the first person to bring the guitar. It was Kwao Mensa. He brought the guitar into Cape Coast University. Right. But I was the first to bring it into Lagon. Right. Yeah. Right. So um, you had traveled with bands. Um, you you came from a background that was totally different. Now you're playing the guitar and you're playing with different bands in a new beat, in, in, in a new environment. How was that for you, trying to pick up these beats and trying to relate to them and try to put them together? Were you writing your music or were you just creating and going on, going according to just what you were hearing? Exactly. I learned it by osmosis. Sugar. You know, um, <laughs> but I, sometimes, you know, I had no, except for Kwao Mensa, mm -hmm. uh, one or two people, I learned everything, if I can call it osmosis. I would watch guitarists and my hand... People would say my hand would go, be going like this while I'm listening to a band. <laughs> because um, you were playing with it in your head. <laughs> yeah, there were no teachers in those, no. those days at all. So I just joined bands and I played in a lot of different bands. And to be honest, when I first started, I couldn't really play high life. No. Obviously, it took me some years to cool down. I learned to play Afro beats and other, uh, not Afro beats, not the, I mean. What I, we the, call Afro beat now. <laughs> yes, I, I'm talking about Fela's exactly. style of music yeah, I learned right. to play. Um, yeah. Even Congolese music, mm -hmm. uh, the Suku style. Mm -hmm. um, and I learned traditional music, drumming, because, oh. but I didn't start like that. I realized that I had to know all the traditional beats if I was going to play popular music, because they used them. So I learned to play Agbaja, Adua, and Palugo, and so on. And, uh, as well so that 
I got a sort of musical training in Ghana. Wow, as and, in um, learning on the job. Yeah, and I had to learn to play polyrhythmic music. You know, in Europe, we don't, we're, we're basically rhythmically impoverished in Europe. True. Um, <laughs> it, except for maybe black American music and so on, or Afro-Caribbean music. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it, it, here, it's not just one rhythm, it's multiple rhythms. So that took me a long time to get a feel for that. Right. Um, and the other thing I, I liked when I first came to Ghana is, as I said, I'm a sort of anarchist. I don't believe in leadership. And uh, I mean, I believe in leaders, <laughs> yeah. but not yeah. institutionalized yeah. leadership. Right. And so in Europe, all our bands and our orchestras always have a conductor or a leader or mm -hmm. a superstar or mm -hmm. a virtuoso. Mm -hmm. And the rest of us are regimented ranks right. of backers. Mm -hmm. Well, when I was playing with the guitar bands, the, what the guitar bands were doing, more so than the dance bands, was they were simply taking the philosophy from drumming and putting it onto guitars. So just as you have multiple drummers mm -hmm. in a traditional group, you know, you can't really say the master drummer is the main drummer no, no. because what about the other drums? Yeah, they, they add to the beat. Yeah, and they're all equal in yeah, a sense. Yeah. Well, the guitarists did the same with the, uh, the guitar bands, did the same with the guitar. There's no real lead guitar mm -mm. originally. Right. There was a tenor guitar and different types of uh, cross melodies. Mm -hmm. And I felt felt very comfortable in that situation where you don't have to be a leader. Leader, you just yeah. had to play along because then it was a group that made the music exactly. happen. It was communal. Right. It's changed now, of course. Yeah. Everything is now leaders and right. e egos and, right. and uh, celebrities <laughs> and all this stuff. But uh, back in those days, particularly the guitar bands, right. they retained the, the older way of communal playing and playing right. music. Right. Yeah. Professor Collins is in our studio this morning. We're learning about himself and how he started out out here and all the bands he's playing, he's been playing with. And of course, we'll go through the real lessons in high life too, including some history lessons as well. You've got to stay with us here this morning on the Cosmopolitan Mix on 99.7 FM, almost 20 minutes to 11. We'll go on a quick break and come back with some more. In case you have any questions and comments, you can send it to us on 0244340437. Do stay. The Cosmopolitan, Cosmopolitan Mix. Hello, good morning. May I have your attention for a few announcements. The West Hills Mall Old School Challenge promotion is here again. Whenever you come shopping at West Hills Mall, simply fill out your name, contact number, and nominate your old school to win 30,000 cities. The school with the highest nomination at the end of the promotion wins 30,000 cities towards a project in the school. So shop at West Hills Mall from now till the 30th of November 2018 and win thousands of prizes, including 30,000 cities, 20,000 cities, 10,000 cities for your old school. Remember, there's no minimum spend and no draw, so everyone can enter the promotion. It's time to shop at West Hills Mall and give back to your old school in the West Hills Mall Old School Challenge promotion. Remember, terms and conditions apply. West Hills Mall, a family shopping experience. The University of Ghana Alumni Association, under the auspices of the University of Ghana, announces as part of the 70th anniversary celebrations of the University of Ghana the 2018 Alumni Lecture on the topic Strengthening Democracy and Good Governance in Contemporary Ghana. Some challenges. The speaker is the Speaker of Parliament, Right Honorable Professor Aaron Michael Quaid. The date is Wednesday, the 10th of October 2018. The time is 5 p.m. The venue is Great Hall, University of Ghana. All are cordially invited. Are you interested in pursuing higher education abroad? Are you thinking of starting your studies in January or September 2019? You can begin this process by attending the Study World UKEAS Study Abroad Fair on Tuesday, October 9, 2018. UKEAS is an education consultancy which provides free and impartial counseling and application services for students wishing to study and live abroad. Attend our October 2018 Study World Study Abroad Fair and meet with representatives from over 40 universities and colleges from USA, Canada, UK, and Australia. The venue is Kempinski Hotel here in Accra. The date is Tuesday, the 9th of October, 2018, and the time is 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can pre-register now for fast-track entry at ukeas.com.gh slash registration or call 0243-245-355 or 0508976300. Come along with your academic credentials. Remember, entry is free. The U.S. Ghana Chamber of Commerce presents the Global Women's Professional 
and Business Exchange Conference on Saturday, October 6th, which is tomorrow, at the Kempinski Hotel here in Accra. Highly accomplished global women will connect with their Ghanaian counterparts for professional and business partnerships, global business, and career advancement opportunities and mentoring. Take your career and business to the next level and join us at the GWX Conference. For more information, you can call 055-326-394 or 50726 You can also visit globalwomenx.org. Be part of the GWX Conference on Saturday, October 6th, which is tomorrow at the Kempinski Hotel at 9 a.m. Tickets are available at the front decks of Joy FM. GWX Conference, keep moving forward together. End of announcement. Radio means joy. to the Cosmopolitan Mix, almost a quarter to 11. We've got Professor John Quisi Collins here in the studio with us. Musician, author, harmonica player, guitarist, journalist, musicologist. And definitely a lot of education we're having already. So before the break, we're talking about the different bands that you played with across West Africa, so to speak, and of yeah. course across the country, Ghana. Which one would you say was your favorite band that you played with? Where did you enjoy being the most? I guess ultimately it was my Boko band. Your Boko band. Yeah, I, I, it, it, it came in various formations. It was originally a support band for Uhuru. Right. So we tra we did some work with the Uhuru band as a sort of pop band mm -hmm. or youth band. Okay. And then um, I, when I was in Jamestown, I, I was working with a lot of guard musicians. So we integrated the Gome drum, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and if, uh, in fact, we, we, we wrote some songs in Ga. Right. I don't speak Ga myself. No, this Minuga. one we're playing is <laughs> Unupa Shapo, right? Yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah the, 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 uh, there's not many words. It's like, no, a, this is why a lot of people have used that song in recent <laughs> years. To, mm -hmm. I mean, Atongo Zimba uses that song in one of his albums. Mm -hmm. And then I said, I was telling you that Weala, Noella, used, yeah. yes, used, used from the, the first track that we played, right? This, no, this very this track. This very yeah, because okay. there's not many words in it. There's some uh, chants, so it, it's very good to do some raps on Over top. Over it, yeah. So it's become quite popular that way. But right. it was, I ri originally wrote it in '78. It was recorded in Ghana Films. This right. particular one. Right. And then this was one of the songs that I played in Nigeria, at Fellas Place, because we were being influenced by Afrobeat. So mm -hmm. I worked out a way of playing Afrobeat on the harmonica. Right. Yeah. Nice. Well, Nupa Shapo is what you're hearing in the background. You can play this with yeah, them. Big Man Shapo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nupa yeah, Shapo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, you'll be amazed when you look at the spelling of it because then you're like, um, what am I trying to say here? But when, you, when you're a guy, you probably understand when they say yeah. Shapo because it's a sharp, right? I, I think some people th thought it was Swapo. You know? <laughs> no, 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 From, Shapo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. But tell me about living in Jamestown and trying to, you know, live with the people and their way of life and everything. How was that for you? Oh, it was wonderful. I mean, I lived in a house called Temple House. Temple House, okay. Which has been pulled down, mm -hmm. like the Sea View Hotel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All the great places With, are being yeah. removed. Right, right. So, in fact, in the future, nobody will have a history no. of Ghana or Accra. No. It's terrible. Anyway, do you have any pictures of it in your yeah, book? I do. Okay. Yes. We'll get to talk about the yeah. book, but I'm just referring to it simply because we're talking about, you know, having a history. Yeah. The right. house was actually built by the Hutton Mills family, mm -hmm. Temple House, because he was a lawyer. And... Um, 
I, it has a strange musical connection. It was the place that when E.T. Mensah used to visit me then, he was living then in Manprobi, he, he was actually nervous in the house because he said as a small boy, he was playing with an orchestra called the, I think it was called the Accra Orchestra, Teacher Lamps' Orchestra, and this is where all the big men, he was a little boy, so he, he was very fearful in the house. And I said, well, all those people have gone. You know, it's no longer a high-class area. <laughs> right. Uh, but um, and then Hutton Mills' daughter was a pianist, and then I set up my band there. And after I left around about 1980 to stay at my father's house in Ofanko, mm -hmm. then Chris Bediaku and the band named Bediaku also stayed there. In so the house. It's, it, and it was right next door to the weekend in Havana which is a famous nightclub. Mm -hmm. So somehow, again, serendipity yeah. played a part. I, I went into a very musical house. Right, at a good time too. Yes, yes, right. very much. Apparently, so. I actually hear that you, um, your, first wife, your first wife was a fire eater and a snake dancer. Yes, Anything yeah, about yeah. That? yes. <laughs> Isn't yes. that eerie? <laughs> we I'm used to do in the middle of our shows, we'd do a sort of a cultural act mm -hmm. with drumming. And that was one of the uh, things that we did with uh, Gifty. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. It sounds scary to me. I mean, you're married to a fire well, eater. All right, let me tell you a story. <laughs> a really interesting story. We were, we were playing in Botiano mm -hmm. to the fishermen, mm -hmm. and our bass player didn't turn up. And the youth became extremely angry because we they thought it was a dance band. You see, without the bass, they consider it a cultural group because right. we used a lot of African drums. Mm -hmm. And we, we tr I tried to get one of the guitarists to put on a, a normal guitar to play bass. No way. These guys were really getting angry and somebody, the gateman, came and told me that they're going to pull knives on us. And so what my... Later, I married this lady mm -hmm. and then later divorced her because mm -hmm. she... That's another story. Okay. But what happened, she, she saw the angry guys with red eyes, they were really coming to damage us. Mm -hmm. And she threw the snakes, the two snakes, <laughs> at them. So they immediately scattered to the edges. Yeah. And that wasn't good enough. She then jumped, jumped down, because she had to burn out the adrenaline right. from these guys. Right. And, and then she jumped, and then she was looking for the ringleaders, those with the reddest eyes, because <laughs> they, they were all charged on Apoteshi and so on. <laughs> so she went and pushed the snakes in front of them. and they all became as tame and cool as possible. And anything we played, they agreed to. Just a mere snake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but there were two snakes, actually. Yeah, two snakes. And they, some of them had them waved in front of their faces. <laughs> but um, so that was, I thought, a very good. Did you, did you learn how to be a snake charmer? I didn't, but I could ha we, I kept the snakes under my bed. Sugar. Yeah, I, I could handle now them. Now I'm beginning to get scared of you. <laughs> no, they were pythons. They don't. <laughs> they don't. Stop they, it now. There's no venom, venom in them. Okay. You can you can you can take you can pl play with them to some extent, but I I wasn't I didn't particularly I didn't go on stage. I mean I'll give you another story. I mean at the, at the Star Hotel we were playing, and there was a white priest. I think he was a Catholic father, and during uh, Gifty's floor show with the snakes and the fire, mm -hmm. he sort of poo pooed the whole thing as oh this isn't real it, it's, it's just a joke. Thing, yeah. And he came up to make fun of her, and his trousers fell down. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know what she did to him, but something happened. She, she started to shake with the snakes, and the man's trousers fell down. So, I, you, you, you don't know, but something did something happen. Something happened. Yeah. <laughs> He tried to spoil, spoil the show and it backfired. <laughs> or, or maybe added to the show. I guess they probably have to be careful of you next time, right? Especially when, you know, you can't really explain how come the pants fell down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, some messages have come in here for you already. Ken in Legon says, Doreen, for learning purposes, can he play the kinds of music he says so we can know it per his description. I don't know exactly what you're saying, but we already just played Onuka Shapo and we played um, a couple of tracks from, but all the same, I mean, you probably can send us another text message to explain the kinds of music he says, because then I don't know exactly what you're trying to say. Anyways, Ebusa Jackson in Cape Coast says, good morning to you and professor. Please ask him how he sees Ghanaian music now, especially our high life music today. My greetings to my wife and three boys, Benjamin, Bernard, and Benedict in Danseman Last Stop. Thanks for sending your message. Prof. Um, um, Ebusa Jackson wants to find out what, he, what you think about Ghanaian music now, especially high life music today. Um, well, that's a, a tough question. I mean, basically, a lot of the music I met in the 60s and 70s mm -hmm. disappeared during the 80s and the 90s. 
early 90s during the military era. Right. So the guitar bands, dis we had about 250 guitar bands in yeah. the country, 150 dance bands. Right. Um, so everything had to be reborn or re yeah, reinvented. Yeah, because of course the clues yeah. and everything just made yeah. all these um, um, guitar band stands redundant because exactly. they couldn't work at night because of curfews. Yeah. Okay, and, and then, so everything just died a natural death. Well, unnatural death, <laughs> really. And a lot of Ghanaian, you know, the Musicians' Union, quarter. I was an executive member in 1979. Mm -hmm. One quarter of our membership has left the country by yeah. 1979. Yeah, because they couldn't work properly. Yeah, exactly. So what came in after this was techno pop, mm -hmm. you know, um, burger high life, then hip life, where y you don't really have to be a trained musician so much because you can ask an engineer to, to provide to, that. Yeah, um, right the beat. And also, I think the a problem that the, the youth had in the 90s was that the government took music out of the education system right. as well. Um, so the, the type of music that we, for a time actually High Life, it looked as if High Life was going to disappear altogether. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that's why I've set up my archives at my house with Konimo and Kwamensa, E.T. Mensa. We were all frightened that it looked as if the youth was going to dump High Life. Right. And it looked like this for some years. Mm -hmm. But in the last few years, High Life has come back. But the youth are very clever. They don't use the word high life no. because it's an old antiquated expression. Right. So they'll say jamma. Jamma. <laughs> but the jamma beats are high life beats. Yeah, it's the same so whether it's a zonto or hip life, they actually got high life inside whether they like it or not. Right. And now of course they're going back to high life. Right. And in fact there's a big fight now going on about where high life comes from. Mm -hmm. And I w you mentioned Jupiter. Exactly, because um, the last time, you know, he was here, we had a conversation about it. And uh, um, I think his views were a little bit skewed because then he didn't understand exactly what it was. So maybe this, saw, is a yeah. great, this is a great opportunity for us to just go back and, you know, talk about where it, um, High Life originally came from, what yeah. the beats and the ingredients are made of, just so that people yeah, will understand. Yeah. Maybe he probably is not the only one who didn't really get it. Well, he was saying that uh, High Life is a shanty. I said it on television as well. And for a start, it's not a shanty. No, it's not a shanty. It was originally Fanti and Ga. Yes. Um, and then he said it wasn't Ghanaian. And, and he, at the moment, the Nigerians are trying to cl claim high life, so yeah. he should be careful about saying that. Right. The, 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 but the thing about the word itself was invented in Ghana in, 1920, in the 1920s. But what we call high life goes back maybe 20, 30, 40 years earlier, partly to the Fanti coast and partly to Accra. And in the Fanti Coast, we had the brass bands who did, a, they call it Adaha music. That type of uh, masquerade uh, brass band music you still get in Fanti land. Right. Elmina, your hometown, and other places. But of course. Yeah, um, <laughs> is, uh, is actually an early form of high life. But, and then the, uh, the fishermen had a music called Osabisaba, where they were influenced by crew guitarists. That came in. Came yeah. in from Liberia. Right. But, and then they indigenized it into their style, Osibisaba, mm -hmm. and then the, the dance bands or dance orchestras, this is all about a hundred years ago, um, were also beginning to, they were playing ballroom music, but occasionally played a local tune, and that's when the name High Life got coined. Right. So it was really, it was really born in Ghana, yeah. and then in 1938, High Life was taken out of Ghana to Nigeria by the Cape Coast Sugar Babies, yeah. and then in the 50s, by E.T. Mensa. Right. And so when I first used to go to Nigeria in the 70s, all of the older generation knew that High Life came from Ghana. Right. But it's the younger generation on both sides seem to have got forgotten where it comes from. Yeah, they probably just need a re-education. <laughs> well, it's good. I mean, the reason you might say, does it really matter? But it, it's good that if you create a, a gem, mm -hmm. it's like you go to America and suddenly somebody says, well, actually, you know, uh, jazz wasn't invented by black Americans. It was invented by, let's say, Canadians or somebody. Mm -hmm. You you might get, they might feel a bit cheated. Right. You know. So if you if you if a country creates a beautiful form of music that spreads to other countries, they should be proud of it right. and also try to make money from, from it. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a tourist, uh, you know, or an attraction or yeah. whatever. Yeah. We should yeah. be proud of it. We should own it, and we should make sure that we keep it alive. And have so museums and houses where famous music, you know, like you have Louis Armstrong House and right. John, John right. Coltrane House in America. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, Temple House has been. It's torn gone. Down. Well, they're all going to go before the yeah. before it's too late. We will find all the historical houses have gone. Gone. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Because we are not preserving what originally was the places where all of these things came up. Yeah. You yeah. were talking about Konimo a few minutes ago, and I probably just remembered from what I what I had been reading that he actually toured with Konimo 
yes, in I, around about 2000s. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, in the 2000s. Yes, yeah, yes. the summer of 2000. How did that go? Well, that I, I heard his name, I heard his music, so I got on my motorbike in 1973 and charged up to Kamasi, expecting to find somebody living in a, in a village as no, a palm. No, no. No, I, I know, I didn't know. He's a very highly s- sophisticated cosmopolitan guy yeah. who plays folk music. Right. And then I recorded with him in 1973, mm-hmm. so, uh, 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 not on the guitars, playing the Asratawa, right. a sort of a, like a rhythmic instrument. Yeah. And we always we were on the executive of the musicians together. We did lots of activities together. So in the end, I went on tour as his second guitarist right. in New England. Right, yeah, right. And are you still are, are you still in touch with? We're, him? I'm seeing him in a couple of weeks. We're going to uh, talk about our various books. Right. He's had a biography written about himself, and right. I've got this book with. Uh, um, uh, it's just been published. High Life Time Three. Right. right. In fact, I have my, it pub- right now. my publisher is sitting exactly. right next to me. I Nana actually have the Damois, book in my hand. Who's it's very quiet. Very nice and thick, but, but yeah. I, he has to say something. <laughs> At a point in time, we have to definitely draw him into the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Folks, it's two minutes to eleven. What we'll do is we'll go to our news at eleven, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about more high life and more about the, you know, the lives and the triumphs and the explorations and expeditions that Professor Collins has been on throughout, you know, the past couple of years here in Ghana. We're coming right back. Stay on. Okay, just to remind you that Labadi Beach Hotel in partnership with Joy FM bringing you Oktoberfest 2018. Come enjoy all the German food and drinks live at the Labadi Beach Hotel. Later on today at 5 p.m. it will go all the way till midnight. And then tomorrow the 6th of October from 2 p.m. till midnight. The amazing Schutz and Flitzer band from Germany will be in attendance. A lot of great stuff for the kids as well. Call us to book your spot. 0544-431213-0540-123691. Come, let's celebrate because Oktoberfest 2018 is here. If you're thinking about cooking anything special for your family this weekend, remember Lily Sunflower Oil. It's rich in vitamin A. It contains omega-3. It's great for all your stewing and your frying, and your family will love all the dishes you prepare with Lily Sunflower Oil. Available in convenient sizes and suitable for all pockets. You will find it in all leading supermarkets and local community shops near you. Lily, tasty food, happy family. Are you ready to fly? Are you ready to touch the sky? Your leading powdered milk, Carbell, is about to make that possible. Guess what? Carbell will be in the sky with a glowing hot air balloon in a community near you. The amazing part is you could be the one flying in that hot air balloon, and it will be absolutely free. So that's Cowbell in the Sky. If you want more information on the balloon in the sky, stay tuned in to Joy 99.7 FM. Or get through to Cowbell on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Cowbell Ghana. Cowbell, our milk. Eleven o'clock. These are the updates at 11 from the Joy Newsroom. Coming up, Nagrat salute teachers as Ghana joins the world to celebrate International Teachers' Day. Government releases 35 million cities to pay arrears of teacher trainees, trainee nurses' allowances. And former President John Mahama challenges government to show evidence of projects it has accomplished since assuming office. Details now with me, Hannah Odami. The National Association of Graduate Teachers, NAGRAT, is saluting all teachers across the country. A statement signed by the General Secretary Samuel Fangdazi praised teachers for inspiring peoples and imbibing in them timeless values. The theme for this year's celebration is the right education means the right to a qualified teacher. NAGRAT says this theme cannot be realized if government fails to expand the training of teachers. The association also requested of government to insist that all schools employ qualified teachers who can deliver quality education if properly resourced and well paid. Moving on, former President John Mahama is challenging government to show evidence of projects it has accomplished since assuming office. John Dramani Mahama is touring the northern region to interact with NDC delegates ahead of the party's flag bearer race. Speaking to party faithful, Mr. Mahama said he is yet to see any of the promises that were made by the MPP during the campaign materialized. 
different, different timelines. Everybody speaking a different language. It's like the government is just, as I said, governance as you go. Ad hoc decision. All the initiatives like free SHS, no policy guideline. And as of now, the information we have is for the first year, only 30% of the money that should have been paid to the schools has been paid. One village, one dam. We don't dig dams in, in, in a rainy season. Rainy season came and went, dry season came, rainy season has come again. So I'm going to wait till the next dry season before they start digging. One million dollars per constituency. Now even the first one million per constituency is nowhere to be found. Ashanti Rijman Minister says it's been disbursed. Somebody too says it's coming. You hear there the former president, John Dramani Mahama. Chairman of Parliament's Select Committee on Agriculture, Kwame Asafuweje, says the committee will probe claims that Sector Minister Dr. Uwusui Fria Kutu requested the renovation of a bungalow for his personal use. The NDC minority in Parliament has alleged that a one million city of cocoa board funds are being used to renovate their residential property. Here is a news desk report. Chairman of the Food and Agriculture Committee, Kwame Asafuweje, confirms the minority's claim that board members of Cocoa Board approved the renovation of the bungalow and that the sector minister took one of the properties for himself. The board has taken a decision. We should renovate our depleted houses, rehabilitate them. One house is around the minister house. He said, okay, I want to move in. So what's the big deal? But the deputy agreed minister, Kennedy Osenyako, is dismissing the claim. Why should minister make requests to Cocoa Board? If minister want an additional or another house, would have even gone for the government bungalows. In a sharp U-turn, chairman of the Agri Committee, Kwame Asafoje, says the minister has not requested for any bungalow, but insists there is nothing wrong if the minister ever makes such a request. He's a surprising minister. Assuming he moves into one bungalow, I don't see anything wrong with that. Because if somebody doesn't move in, who else? She move in that bungalow. But the minister has not put in any request. The minister has not moved into any cocoa board bungalow. That was a news desk report. Government says it has released 35 million cities to pay arrears or training nurses across the country. This is according to the Deputy Information Minister Pius Enam Haji. He assures that the outstanding 25 million cities will soon be released to complete the payment. Now, I tell you what will happen at 2 p.m. today. You'll have to join us as Joy News takes your questions on who killed the judges. It will be live on our Joy News channel today at 2 p.m. As I said earlier, you'll, join, you'll be joined by the producer of the documentary, Raymond Aqua, and the host of the show, Kojo Youngston. Remember, it's 2 p.m. It'll be live on Facebook, Who Killed the Judges? A documentary about crimes that shook the nation. Join us. But we'll be back at 12 with more news from across the country. My name is Hannah Odami. Super Hits Radio, Radio. Joy 99.7. At ShopRite, you'll find everything you need and more. From our world-class butchery and bakery to the freshest fruit and veg, all at the lowest prices. Like a one-liter pack of Incolac Full Cream UHD milk for only 7 CDs, 49 pesos. And get a 200-gram can of Hanes Baked Beef for just 2 CDs, 99 pesos. Valid till 7th October. Shop right. Lower prices you can trust always. La Badi Beach Hotel, in partnership with Joy FM, brings you Oktoberfest 2018. Catch all the fun with German food and drinks live at the La Badi Beach Hotel this October. It's Friday, 5th October, from 5 p.m. till midnight, and Saturday, 6th October, from 2 p.m. till midnight. Performing live is the amazing Schlutz and Flitzer band from Germany. There will be lots of fun for the kids, too. For inquiries and bookings, please call 0544-431213 or 0540-123691. It's Oktoberfest 2018. Come, let's celebrate! Memories. They fade away as fleetingly as they are made. But to hold on to precious moments, you need a smartphone you can rely on. Get the new Nokia 1, 2.1 and 3.1 smartphones with the latest Android, durable design and unlimited photo storage with Google Photos to save those unforgettable moments.
Batmath has worked for over 30 years, making sure your safety is guaranteed by choosing the best suppliers. We only stock quality and original electrical products from our official importers, Ingelec and Le Grand. So for your cables, light bulbs, breakers and all electrical products, rely on us and we will never let you down. Batmath, everything for construction from foundation to finishing. Airtel Tigo is undergoing a nationwide network upgrade so that we can provide you with wider coverage, faster internet, and super clear calls. This network upgrade is going to be a smooth one. However, in situations where you have a network challenge, such as no service or emergency, kindly visit any Airtel Tigo shop or SIM upgrade center nationwide to upgrade your SIM for free. You can also call Airtel Tigo on 100 or 0277-551-000 or 0260-000-100. For more information, as we fully round up on our network upgrade, this upgrade will not affect your Airtel Tigo money account, airtime, or phone contacts. It's what we've all been waiting for, as we give you a bigger, better, stronger network that gives you the most. Airtel Tigo. The 16th International Building Construction and Property Exhibition 2018 is here again. Ghana's most comprehensive exhibition featuring every aspect of building, construction, architectural and interior design industry. A one-stop shop for all local and international players to showcase their latest products, services, trends and technology. This event is from the 4th to the 6th of October 2018 at the Moving Big Ambassador Hotel Accra from 9am to 7pm. There will be a forum on the 5th of October at the Moving Big Hotel themed Smart Secured Construction. This event is organized by Image Consortium Group Limited under the auspices of the Ministry of Works and Housing in collaboration with all building professionals. Proudly sponsored by Duraplast, Fox Cooling, YNW Industries Limited, X Natural Mineral Water, Leader Price and Advantage Austria, Media Partners, Joy FM, Gold Street Journal, DDP, Quest TV and City Construction and Property Magazine. Admission for participation is free for all visitors. Call us on 0246 655 392. Worms in the human body causes loss of harm and discomfort to us from a simple age to loss of concentration in children affecting their studies. Worms are dangerous. Use Wemplex 400 to kill them and set yourself free. One tablet of Wemplex 400 kills over seven different types of intestinal worms. Wemplex 400 can be taken any time of the day and not only at night. No need to take any sweet or purgative after taking Wemplex 400. Wemplex 400, your one stop the Wema for their family. Every day should have the perfect start. Every day should start with the great taste of expertly blended coffee, smooth, creamy, and delicious. Every day should start with a great taste of Nescafe three in one coffee. It all starts with a Nescafe. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. It's the beat, the rhythm, the sound. This is 99.7 Joy FM. Folks, you welcome back to the Cosmopolitan Mix here on Joy 99.7 FM. Well, since this world teachers, they would like to play this one, especially for all teachers the world over. There's one here for Mr. Sante at St. Teresa School, North Kanishi. Mr. Zuma sent it in. For all of you teachers out there, this one is for you. We'll come back pretty shortly with our conversations with Professor John Collins. Some of your questions have come in already. Keep them rolling in 
Pino and the Marriott International Band dedicated to all teachers. It's part of World Teachers Day. Definitely, I have amazing teachers. I remember Mr. Tamaklo of blessed memory. He just made me love biology, including Mr. Yamoa. Many thanks for making biology a pleasant subject. And one teacher I never forget, Mrs. Edigrafti Aboa in Tema. She taught me in Tema parents class five. That was definitely one beautiful and amazing teacher. And if you're listening, good morning. And for another teacher who definitely made Ghanaian music popular out there, and I thought hundreds of people who still appreciate her life music, Professor Collins, who's here with us in the studio. Some questions have come in for you already. A gentleman in Tema Joseph says, um, please ask your guest for me that why is live band music not functional nowadays and what can be done to bring it back? Because live music it's really, really good. Yeah, I mean, in, in fact, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, <laughs> there was only live music. Mm -hmm. Nobody mind. Um, but I think, um, although he's saying that there's not much live music, things have improved over the last five oh, yeah. or ten years. Yeah, quite a lot. I mean, if, if he'd said this 20 years ago or 15 years ago, I would have said definitely it's been basically wiped out. Everybody's miming. Right. Even people who could sing right. and play. It was they a fashion mind. to mind. Yeah. It, was, it, was it, a, it, beca it became fashionable. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, what, my, my argument about this is that now the, the, the youth coming up now, the musicians, are the children of the hip lifers who were miming and the burger musicians mm -hmm. who were miming. Mm -hmm. So you always want to do the opposite to your parents. Right. So if they're miming, you <laughs> Let go... Let me do live. You, yeah. yeah. And, and in fact, that's what's exactly right. beginning to happen now. Right, yeah. right. But a lot of young people, yes, are learning to, you know, perform with live bands, which is definitely mm. a good thing. So You know yes. who was the first? I mean, the first hip lifer to really perform live was Sydney. He made a big fuss and uh, announced that he was going to play at Labadi Beach in 2001. And of course he flopped right. because he, he, he didn't know how to play live. Right. So he, he humbled himself mm -hmm. and I saw him playing at small, small clubs and, then uh, and getting the skills of playing live. Right, and then uh, he revived. Yeah, and then of course other people like Obua and others followed. And now the trend is actually live performance. Right, right. So definitely it's... Or it's, at least one of the trends. At, at least. Yeah. It's, it's gradually, you know, it's getting mm. better, as a matter of fact. It's getting better. Yeah. Okay, Linda Enosu is enjoying the conversation. She says, ask Prof whether which Ghanaian language he speaks since he can't speak Ga. Well, uh, I speak a little bit of tree. You know, when I became a Ghanaian, I naturalized. I was obliged to l speak one language, language which yeah. is the, the what I can speak broken tree okay broken tree is fine but they've you know the immigration people forgave me because i can play palm wine guitar <laughs> so it's a type of communication a ghanaian communication but uh, not with words yeah so they said this is they said okay yeah. you you could definitely go past with that one yeah but at least your broken tree gets you by right for in markets and, in and yes and when people are trying to talk about me or yeah, behind my back exactly you understand <laughs> and then you just let them go until you say me today I'll can ask you <laughs> yeah. or Mimpesa or Mimpesa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not bad at all we're still talking about her life but, that, but you think actually that there's been a learning curve with the development of her life in Ghana over the years do you think so? I would have said up to the 1970s or 80s there was a, a series of, of 
advances in high life development. I mean, you know, it started with the da da ballroom dance orchestras and the, the small palm wine groups of fishermen and so on. Um, and, and they evolved in, into dance bands, very sophisticated mm -hmm. dance bands and guitar bands. Even some people say that co complex jazz chords mm -hmm. got introduced into high life, let's say by people like Ebo Taylor and others in the 60s and 70s into a huru band. But in fact, we have Ony Onyina in the guitar band who right. was doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So there was a sort of a, an evolution in high life. Um, and then it evolved into Afro rock and Afro beat. Right. You know, Fela was a high life musician. The Os Osipisa guys were high life musicians. But then came the curfews and the military coups, and everything stopped. Mm -hmm. So, it, in a sense, it had to, it, everything's being reinvented mm -hmm. again. So, if you imagine it as a graph, you start high, you're coming down, and now we're creeping up. Whether yeah. we've got to the same position we yeah. were, yeah. I don't know. That's. Yeah. It depends on your taste. Right. The music has changed, changed. but it has. Yes, but if, if you take people like um, it's a kiddie and the others, you know, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're playing high life and they're singing high life. Right. And of course, m most of the high life today actually is in the churches. Mm -hmm. The gospel music is, is based on high life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and many of those uh, women who have been trained in the churches are coming out as independent singers now. Right. You know, like right. um, Effia and so, the others. Right. So I that. I mean, in, in my book, my, you know, what, uh, my, the book I just published. Um, I think it's a good time to talk about the exactly. book and then we can just come back to That's, the conversation. Sort of because, psychologically yeah, because maneuver, then we've been yeah. referring to it a few times yeah. where, you know, people just don't know exactly yeah. about it. So let's talk a little bit about the yeah. book now. I mean, it's the third publication. It was originally published by Anansi Sen Press, uh, you know, Wiraku Brobby, Dr. Wiraku Brobby, who I love because he, he, he always had faith in my writing. Mm -hmm. um, he was the only one. Without right. him, I would have never had a book published in Ghana. You know, my E.T. Mensa book that he published. Um, so, um, it, this I wrote it about 95, and my last chapter is called The Ghost in the Machine, because I was so demoralized about the youth using gadgets and throwing human beings out of music. So everybody was miming, lip syncing. You never saw a live band. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is the end of the road, we're finished. Um, so, so the human being is like a ghost surrounded by mechanical gadgets, musical gadgets. Mm -hmm. But my, my new book is completely different. I'm very optimistic. And I have this metaphor of 20 musical pots bubbling on a big stove. Right. And I, I can't predict which one is going to dominate, but we have so <laughs> many new pots. Yeah. Look at what's happening in northern Ghana yeah. and upper. We didn't have a pop scene no, there 20 but, years ago. Yeah, but look at what it's look at the people mm. coming out of there now. Yes, yeah. it's amazing. I yeah. mean, so there are some, and we have these new, uh, we have the Afro pop that mm -hmm. a lot of women are entering in, into that through yeah. the church, yeah. church trained women. Right. We, uh, we have the old high life, the new high life, the contemporary high, high life. life. We have the jammer hip life, yeah. which is really high life. Yeah. Even a zonto. Yeah. or Afro beats. It's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's got it's those uh, elements of yes, high life yes, in there too, yes. so we could still call that high life. Yeah, so you talk about all of that in your book. I sort of divide it into 20 categories. Yeah, does that also include some of, you know, some of the notes you wrote whilst you were on the road, you know, starting mm. out your career yeah, back in the day? in a sense, the book does contain that. Right. And I also even deal with traditional music. Just to give you one example, I was talking to an expert on the music of Dagbon a few mm -hmm. days ago. Mm -hmm. Just in Dagbon alone, they have 60 distinct drum dance styles wow. just in Dagbon mm. we haven't that's mentioned just, the Shanti that's just a, one minute fraction yeah. of the country so the rhythmic wealth of Ghana mm -hmm. and you could even say the whole of Africa if right. if just one ethnic group has 60 dances ha, what about the Ashantis what about the Eves yes. the Gaz the Yorubas the I mean the, and the, the thing is really for the youth to tap into this right. this more uh, ancient rhythmic knowledge right. because you see like I said earlier the, the West is impoverished rhythmically all the rhythms you being used in the West now are from black America mm. but even those are only they're finite right. but in Africa if you said that a, a, a ethnic group like the Dagbon have 60 rhythms se separate dance rhythms then how many for the whole of Africa where you have 1500 ethnic groups right. you can you can see tens of thousands yeah, of rhythms and yeah. and if African countries don't get get it together including Ghana to I'm not saying nationalize or copyright them but look after these rhythms it's a huge 
wealth. Yeah, that we're basically not paying yeah, attention and, to. And people would come and steal them mm -hmm. and use them yeah. and then sell them back to you. Exactly, because then you probably can't sit down. I mean, if you, you take good care of it, you can always say, hey, he sampled my song. Let me just go and get my money from there. Yes. But if we don't do that, they'd take it and we won't even know they did. And they'd be living and making their money and um, we'll still be poor. <laughs> it's like raw material. Yeah, definitely. But it's, but it's not raw material. It's highly sophisticated <laughs> yeah. music. Yeah, you know, it's taken right. thousands of years to you're develop. You're right. And what's the title of the book now? Her Lifetime Three. Three. Yes. Her Lifetime Three. And you can find it at music department in Legon, the Legon <laughs> Bookshop, Wild Gecko in Jowulu, Ghana Association of Writers Office at Roman Ridge, <laughs> Booknook.store. They will deliver in Ghana. <laughs> Ehonam Books. Is is that what it is? Oh, a Hanum Books. Okay. Nubuke Foundation in East Ligon. And since the publisher is here, we'll probably have to get a few words from him as well. Say a few things. Yes. I mean, what has gone in, what has gone into the making of um, High Lifetime Three, and um, basically, how's it doing so far? Doing well. Let, That's let me just na, 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 <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Let me also add that globally, you can get it on Amazon. Right. Yeah. Um. It's, it's been an, an interesting journey mm -hmm. uh, with Prof. So we've been working on this for, for, for a year, actually. Prof, this is exactly a year since okay. we started working on it. Wow. You know, and uh, it's been an interesting journey. It's, it's, it's a book, 360, three, 632 pages. So it's, you can it's imagine. Thick. It's a big book. You can book. imagine. Mm, yeah. So it's, it, it catalogs about 200 years of, of history of music uh, across across uh, West Africa, basically. Yeah, I think it's a book yeah. every home should have. It's, it's an it makes amazing, very interesting it's reading. An, it's an amazing. Yeah. So it's, it's doing very well. And it's we, got pictures too. I mean, for those who like to see pictures. Yeah, so we're also beginning to get some universities abroad, picking them up. Uh, because see, the, the second edition was done in 1997. So this is really, really updated. This yeah. is like four times the, the second edition. Oh, yeah, it's like 10, 10 years Absolutely. or 11 years in addition. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something. Uh, Prof finished the bulk of it in 2015. Four, yeah, 14 or 15. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, because we are publishing it last, um, we were working on it from last year, we asked him to write a bridge to cover the three years that had passed. That was almost... 20,000 words. Wow. Yeah, but 70, <laughs> my introduction, 70 pages, is what's happened in the last three year, years. Yeah. You know, four years. Yeah. yeah. God willing, you can imagine what would happen in another 10 years it's if we had to do a high, li high lifetime four, because yeah, then yeah. it would be probably a thousand pages and, exactly. you know, and yeah. counting. But it sounds like a good deal. So now you know exactly where to get the book. What we'll do is it's 25 past 11 now. Quick break. We'll come back into, uh, you know, what what Professor Collins is up to now and basically what he does in his free time. A lot more from, from you if you have any questions or comments. 0244-340-437. We're going to our show business news right now and then we'll be right back. Stay on, please. <laughs> Right along, our show business news proudly brought to you by Nokia smartphones. Nokia Android smartphones. Get a Nokia smartphone today and experience pure, secure, and most up-to-date Android always on Nokia. So the president of the Creative Arts Council, Marco Krekumante, says collective societies such as the Ghana Music Rights Organization, GAMRO, are not avenues to make musicians rich. Some musicians have expressed concerns about the delay in the payment of their royalties. They have most often blamed GAMRO for being an impediment to the progress of their music careers. Recently, a former member of the defunct group Double, Parkwesi, in an interview noted that young musicians are currently not doing music because of GAMRO. He alleged that GAMRO has been mishandling their royalties and thus pushing the youth to choose football as a career instead of music. I think we'll discuss with the prof Professor Collins in a little bit. However, Marco Krekumante, who disagreed with this assertion by the singer, noted that musicians should rather focus on making money through streaming of their songs. He added that monies that come from Gamro are not enough to make musicians rich. Yeah, well, you may not have heard that um, Ed Leom Adabla, popularly known as EL, the award-winning Ghanaian rapper, 
has just dis- declared himself the best rapper in Africa in a new interview. He's speaking with Bola Ray on Revealed with Bola Ray. In a yet-to-be aired episode, EL declared himself the best rapper in Africa when the question of who is the best rapper in Africa was raised by Bola Ray. Now, even when the names of Sarko Manifest and others were mentioned by the host, EL insisted that he's the king above them all. EL on the same show mentioned Sarko Manifest and Payday, aka Omar Stelling, as his best rappers in Ghana. Despite EL being regarded as one of the best rappers in Ghana, he has been missing in action since he won Artist of the Year at the 2016 Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. Well, I guess by next week we'll find out exactly what he's been doing and probably bring him back onto the show. Rough Town Records' latest edition, when Deshay has had a tough time online today. Now, the musician, who is on a steady rise with three hit singles to her credit already, had to clear the air on an image of hair she claims to have been photoshopped, which, is, which has been trending since late afternoon Thursday, October 4. Taken during her performance at the just ended Miss Ghana Beauty pageant, when Deshay's butt is clearly seen and has warranted a lot of trolls with people making a mockery of her. However, Wendy Shea is not perturbed as she assesses that the image was photoshopped by individuals with evil plans to destroy her and her hard work. In a post, she said, My passion is entertainment and I'm thankful to God for giving me the talent. It's quite unfortunate that in my quest to show it, people who want to belittle what I can't do hide behind the internet and they project lame and shameful images which have nothing to do with me. Well, I hope that this photoshopping issue is the truth though. Ghanaian renowned high life singer KK Fosu aka D Style has disclosed that it wasn't his intention to sing secular music in Bishop Ibinim's church. According to the singer, he went to visit the man of God and not to sing. Whatever happens in our lives, I see to be the plans of God. It wasn't my wish to go there and sing. I went to visit the man of God because he was having a program that week. So that time we got there, he was going to preach. We decided to do some prayers whilst we wait for him. But it got to a time that they had to go on a break and Obinim asked me to entertain the congregation. Actually, I was shocked, so it wasn't intentional. And the songs I sang too were not profane or anything against God's law. He revealed KK Fosu is currently promoting his new jam dub Lovers Rock, which features award-winning female vocalist Adina. Well, that's it in our show business world. Probably brought to you by a Nokia Android smartphones. Get a Nokia smartphone today and experience pure, secure, and most up-to-date Android always on Nokia. I'd like to remind you about interesting things happening coming up pretty shortly. Well, in another month or so. Joy Prime Made in Ghana Fair comes off from the 1st to the 4th of November at the Junction Mall Nungwa Barrier between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. daily. For further inquiries, you can call 0540-123805-050-2148535. The Joy Prime Made in Ghana Fair 2018, 1st to the 4th of November at the Junction Mall Nungwa Barrier. So the Nokia 1, Nokia 2.1 and Nokia 3.1 smartphones come packed with the power of the latest Android. They are pure and clutter-free. Now this means no bloatware apps and hence more memory for your use as you desire. Also, I love that these phones are affordable but are a step ahead of the curve with classic durable designs. To add to that, they come with unlimited photo storage with Google Photos. Now these ones are the real deal. So grab your Nokia 1, Nokia 2.1 or Nokia 3.1 smartphone and enjoy, especially with the Google Photos. It's also time for you to own a hotel-inspired apartment near Accra Mall and switch on your urban life with a cool price, starting from 315,000 Ghana CDs. Choose our market-leading studio one, two, three-bedroom apartment from Oasis Park Condominium at Tetequashi and enjoy urban resort life. Talk to Evelyn on 020-4343-011 or call Kojo on 020-4343-008 or visit cplestatesgh.com. This is another kit of development by CPL developers, built for life. Over 100,000 drivers will, will win big every day in the Shell Filling Nia D promo. It's reloaded with seven grand Hyundai I-10 cars, 100 motorbikes, free shopping, free fuel for three 
in six months, and over 300,000 Ghana CDs worth of instant airtime up for grabs. Just drive to any Shell station and buy fuel worth 80 Ghana CDs or more to receive a scratch card. Then, dial star 714 star 40 hush, press send, enter the code, press send again, and you could drive off with one of the over 90,000 instant giveaways. Or you can play in the six bi-weekly draws to win one of the brand new cars, motorbikes, and more. Now, this promo is in partnership with Hyundai Motors, Investments, and NLA on the Caritas Lottery platform. And this promotion will go up until the 23rd of December 2018, but remember terms and conditions apply. Shell Fuel Save. Fuel designed to last longer. Because feeling me a deep. The future is uncertain. You never know how it's going to turn out. And sometimes we wait for a sign to come in through the front door. It usually doesn't happen, but sometimes it does. Sometimes we get a chance to be a part of something truly great. To grab a piece of the future for ourselves. To explore the future with a new class of experts. To build a whole new world with revolutionary ideas. The time to make this future certain is here. Own a piece of Energy Commercial Bank as we go public. The future is now within your grasp. Talk to your broker and invest in Energy Commercial Bank stock today. Together, let's own Energy Commercial Bank. Supporting your aspirations. This was Kwame's life before Interplast in Green Irrigation System. Kwame, sorry, what could Kwame from? In the dry season, Kwame would use buckets to water his five-acre farm. By evening, he's so tired. So his wife said, Oh, Kwame, Emre Dania, Danny B, haven't you heard of In Green Drip Irrigation Pipe? In Green Drip Irrigation Pipe? Yes, Akosia told me they use it. See how green their fields are, even in the dry season. You just set it and then psh, 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 it waters the whole place. No waste, save time and money. And we can farm all year round. Hey, Ajua, what can I move? It's in dry buckets, no? not just in green drip pipes and your time mommy ah. good farmers harvest all year with in green call us now on 0302 819 another quality solution from interplast i am dr Acacia. Acacia superior it support enables making payment on claims twice as fast as the regular health insurance providers in the country so your workers get treatment quickly and can return to handling your business Acacia health insurance we place value on those you value La Badi Beach Hotel, in partnership with Joy FM, brings you Oktoberfest 2018. Catch all the fun with German food and drinks live at the Labadi Beach Hotel this October. It's Friday, 5th October, from 5 p.m. till midnight, and Saturday, 6th October, from 2 p.m. till midnight. Performing live is the amazing Schlutz and Flitzer band from Germany. There will be lots of fun for the kids, too. For inquiries and bookings, please call 0544-431213 or 0540-123691. It's Oktoberfest 2018. Come, let's celebrate! At Afrodan, we believe that many of the problems people have with their health is as a result of the way they sit. In other words, your chair can kill you. Here's Dr. Marcus Mann of the Chiropractic and Wellness Center. What you have to remember is that the spine is the lifeline to your body, and posture is the window to that spine. Now, posture is affected by your daily activities and habits like sitting. That's why at the Chiropractic and Wellness Centers, we recommend what I believe to be the best chairs available for preventing not only subluxations, but also other health problems that you may not be aware of, and that's Rabami and Mobilex chairs. Unfortunately, on a daily basis, I have to correct the effects of this poor sitting habit in our businessmen and businesswomen. Always remember, optimal spine equals optimum health. So, for the sake of your health, buy Rabami or Mobilex chairs from Afrodan. We are on the first floor of the Swansea Shopping Arcade. Telephone 663-085. 
Running a local company? Ready to grow faster, go further? Well, now you can with faster targeted solutions from Ecobank Commercial Banking. Our easy to use digital platforms and super responsive service can help you deliver smarter collection, payments, and trade solutions for your business right away. To get our powerful Pan African platform working for you starting today, contact a dedicated relationship manager with local corporate expertise at CMB Ghana at Ecobank.com or use our easy self service solutions at Ecobank.com. Echo Bank, the Pan African Bank. A one, a two, three, let's go. Two. The third edition of the Joy Prime Made in Ghana Fair comes off from Thursday 1st November to Sunday 4th November 2018 at the Junction Mall, Nungwa Barrier from 8am to 8pm each day. For further inquiries and information, contact 0540-123-805 or 0502-148-535 or 0274-020-699. Joy Prime Made in Ghana Fair 2018. Too much, I'm way too hot. Hello, good morning. May I have your attention for a few announcements? The International Building Construction and Property Exhibition is here again. This is Ghana's most comprehensive exhibition featuring every aspect of construction, architectural, and interior design. The 16th International Building Construction and Property Exhibition comes off between the 4th of October and the 6th of October 2018. And the venue is the Mevin Peak Ambassador Hotel here in Accra. Time is 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. each day. This event is proudly sponsored by Duraplax, Fox Cooling, YNW Industries Limited, Ideal Home Decor, X Mineral Water, Advantage Austria. This program is supported by Joy FM. Admission is free. For more information, you can visit imageconsortiumgroup.com or call 0244321969 or 0244-838531. Executive Women Network presents the second annual Executive Women's Network Conference on the theme Implementing Brand Ghana, the Role of Women Leaders. This conference comes off on Friday, October 12, 2018 at the Labadi Beach Hotel here in Accra. You can pick up your tickets from the Barclays Bank branches in Osu, East Legon and Tema Community 1 or call Wendy on 056-111-0444. The National Executive Committee of the Ketabusko O Student Association cordially invites all O students to the first ever speech and prize giving day of the Keta Business College. The program is tomorrow, Saturday, 6th of October 2018. The venue is Keta Business College Campus at Keta. Time is 8 a.m. Headline sponsors of Students Awards are the 1998 and the 2008 year groups. End of announcement. <laughs> Radio means joy. Folks, you welcome back to the Cosmopolitan Mix. We're having a very exciting chat with Professor John Collins, musicologist, journalist, musician, harmonica player. And he actually owned the band and run the band Boko. You're hearing from the Boko Beats album. <laughs> so tell me, um, actually, I just wanted us to go to your family for a little bit. So let's talk about you and, you know, children, family. You have any children? Yes. You're still married now? Yes. Uh, my, uh, my first wife, my girl wife, she went to Britain with me because, and then never came back. Right. So I had the snick chow. Yes. So okay. I, she's still there. <laughs> okay. So, so m much later, I remarried an okay. Ebe lady who sadly died two years ago. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, but she was also... Her, her, I got to know her because her father was the, a master drummer in, in near Achimota. Right. Um, at Kis the Kissima sort of area. Right. Um, Ebe master drummer. And he taught his seven daughters to dance and seven sons to drum. Wow. And... I was actually taught drumming by the uh, father's uh, brother, right. and that's how I met her right. so, through right. that sort of connection. Right. Um, uh, and then we have a son. I have a son. He's he might be listening right now. He's 25 years old, called wow. Thomas. Thomas. And Does he, he like music too? He plays for Kwesi Uteng. He's the guitarist with Kwesi Uteng. Uteng. I see. Yeah. I see. So he's a very good. He, and he also plays trumpet. But he's, right. He, He's good at both. Nice. And he inherited the music genes. <laughs> yeah, but you know, on my, on my wife's. Uh, wife's side it was the grand his grandfather was a very famous Eve trumpeter traditional right. trumpeter not right. uh, high life right 
you know, playing sort of bobobo style, that right, sort of thing. Right, right, right. And he was very tall, and my son is also very tall. Wow. Six foot four. Nice, yeah. nice, yeah. nice. And so, you know, you do you share some of, some of your experiences concerning the music that you all play? We sometimes even play together. I mean, we, uh, we, we, for instance, we played together when Guy Warren Ganaba died, mm -hmm. and we played even quite recently. I think it was at the um, Goethe Institute and one or two other places. Right. We do play together. Nice. And he's learned. I've taught him to play the uh, Palm Wine High Life, of course, yeah. which most of his contemporaries do, do not, not know how to yeah. play. Right. So that gives him an added advantage. Right, yeah. right. They're talking about teaching people to play. Um, you've been visiting and lecturing in um, universities outside Ghana. Yeah. Is there an interest to study music by these countries? I mean, do you have people out there who bring you out there to come and say, teach them Ghanaian music? Oh, yes, yes. There's been an interest. I mean, the originally, uh, for at least about 30, 40, 50 years, Ghanaians have been going over to America and other countries to teach traditional drumming. Mm -hmm. And often they teach in schools as right. well. Right. Um, so a whole generation of Europeans and Americans have been exposed to African drumming right. through these teachers right. um, who are sort of attached to universities. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, in more, for about maybe the last 20 or 30 years, the Westerners have also, also become interested in popular music, like right. High Life, right. um, Sukus, Quela for South African music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, you, you find a lot of collaborations. When, when, I, when I was first here, um, if, when I took High Life to, to Britain or talked about it, nobody was interested or knew about it. Yeah. But it's quite different now. Right. Because of this so called world music phenomenon. Right. And now, of course, we get what we call electronic dance music, mm -hmm. house, garage, and so on. Mm -hmm. And now they're beginning to integrate African rhythms. Right. This is why I was saying. Africans better be careful because they've got a huge de deposit or repository of rhythms, which, you know, maybe they'll be taken and developed somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, and um, we'll probably lose out completely, you know. And talking about taking music from here to Britain, um, I was also reading about um, a BBC radio show that you did in 1978. Yeah, And yeah. Um, basically, um, my... I would, I would like for you to tell us a little bit more about that radio show and also t say, um, probably explain if something like that can be done out here, if, you know, we revisited that radio show and put it together again. Yeah, of course, I mean, the people I was talking about, it was during the time of people like Fela Anikola Kuti and Franco mm -hmm. from, uh, you know, OK Jazz. Mm -hmm. um, so, that, of course, the musicians will have changed now. but. Uh, it happened, it happened, I can't remember, a friend of mine who was actually in Ghana, was a BBC stringer, arranged, I think, for the program, and they, they just decided, this was 78, so it was just at the beginning when people were beginning to become interested in what they later called world music, but that's just African music, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a, Mike, a guy called Mike Popham, and I had, in fact, I was frightened of the microphone. <laughs> you know, I was nervous <laughs> of a night, and you know, they played a trick on me. No. And maybe this is a good thing because this is a radio program. Right. If you get somebody who's a, who you really want on the radio, but they're nervous about speaking into a microphone, what you do is, supposing I'm that person, you're very aggressive to me. You pretend you're on the air. You're not really, of course. <laughs> and you insult me. Right. And I insult you back. And after that, the taboo is broken, and I, I feel free in front of a microphone. <laughs> and then like, you just move on. Yeah, that's what. They was did. that what they did to you? That's exactly <laughs> because they knew I had the information, but I was too soft-spoken right. or not forthcoming. Mm -hmm. So they insulted me in a booth, and then I, I was a bit perplexed. And they said, "Well, you 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 will have no more problems with microphones." Yeah, you've broken the myth, yeah. and you can go ahead and do what <laughs> you got to do. But how was that radio show like? And um, if we are supposed to like try and do something similar, what would you think that we should put in to make it even more exciting? Well, it would have to be so much different mm -hmm. but uh, it was five half hour programs right. it was on the external service mm -hmm. and I went into the background the history I think I even played the guitar and so on and, and, and um, I had a oh one of the good things is you know when I write these books I always put the musicians in their own quotes like if I'm interviewing E.T. Mensa there's big sections where he's speaking in his own voice mm -hmm. or of course not his writing mm -hmm. Because I, I, I translate them exactly, right. um, or transcribe them. So what happened is I, I was able to bring in, or the BBC brought in a very good actor, Ghanaian actor, and he would 
able to speak the parts. Mm -hmm. So we could reconstitute eat whoever it was, even if they passed away, right. because of the way I wrote the books. Right. And all my books are full of quotations mm -hmm. or huge segments. Mm -hmm. I could have a full conversation with E.K. Nyami or Guy Warren or Kwao Mensa, whoever it is. Right. So that because of the way I, I kept the words of the musicians in, in the, the books, music, yeah. it, they can be retrieved even if they're passed away. Mm -hmm. And it's good I did this because, in a sense, their words are in their songs, right. but we don't have their commentaries yes. on yeah. what they were doing. Yeah. Because, as I said, even when I first came to Ghana, nobody had bothered to written, r write anything except those few people I mentioned. F.O. Sutherland, for instance, was yeah. the person who introduced me to Bob Johnson, right. who was one of the concert party pioneers. You know, and she'd done some work on him. Right. But it's very good that the youth can also be exposed to the thoughts. Uh, uh, because in, in Ghana, musicians don't write usually. There's only one Ghanaian musician who's written his own autobiography, Guy Warren, because he's a journalist. Right. But even um, somebody like Konimo, mm -hmm. who's just had a book written, was written by somebody else. I had to write biographies of other people, people you right. know. Right. So I think the next step is for the musicians also to write their own biographies. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Speaking of musicians writing their own biographies, um, let's talk about you know um, the work you did with um, Musica back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sure. In I mean, if you compare what what it was like in the 70s and now, a lot of things have changed. But do you think that? Um, you you can give them some advice to revive music and make the musicians really believe in it in the group um, and probably you know put together some of their challenges they're going yeah. through right now well I, I have to be very careful what I say because I'm actually <laughs> a, a patron you're still a patron I'm yes. still and I yes. was one of the founding yeah. members yes, um, yes. Uh, I would say that um, what we need in Ghana at the moment mu music is a trade union mm -hmm. it protects the rights of musicians but it can't be the whole music industry. Right. So they have to team up with other people in production, music production, promotion. And we have so many organizations like this in Ghana, mm -hmm. and they form a single entity, uh, sort of an umbrella entity, call it the Music Council, which will have the clout to represent the music industry at, at government level. The, go the government has already created what they call the creative arts sector. Right. But you see, the problem with that is that music is only one component, mm -hmm. and it might be neglected. It can happen. So the musicians need their own po po portion of that, which right. we can call the Music Council. Mm -hmm. And so you can call in the Musicians' Union will be one part of it, and the Producers' Union will be well, another part. part of it. And yeah. Because each of the, the, those they people have different... F yeah, they like played different parts. Yeah, because yeah. the music industry, like so many in I industries, are factional. Mm -hmm. The workers versus the bosses. Or right. Or, or, but you have to, at some level, bring them all together. And, and then it would stop people complaining about, oh, the musicians are bickering again. They're always, like you were saying about <laughs> yeah, Gamro. Yeah, about and, yeah, and them so having on. royalties you, you know, paid. Yeah. All those people could be into in a music council, right, right. come to common... Uh, uh, ideas where they all agree mm -hmm. and push them forward into the government right. level. Well, since you are still a patron, maybe you know, maybe at your next meeting, you probably want to advice and see if some of these things can be put into practice and see how best we can move yeah. Musica forward yeah. and make but, you know our music association a better yeah. one, right? But Musica has done one very, very important in the last few years. Mm -hmm. They put out a very substantial book about the statistics of the music industry right. with KPMG. Right. Even I was a consultant on it. And it's the first time that any type of facts and figures about the... You see, it's very difficult to, to talk to the government about the music industry when you have no facts and figures. figures yeah. Well, the, mu the mu music has provided this. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether people are aware of, the, of yeah. this document. Yeah, I guess, you know, yeah, when you know how it is. When you put in a document and people do not read, they don't understand, they don't think that there's nothing like that. So, mm. you know, maybe they'll keep bickering. But maybe, you know, we probably have to put the word out there so they understand the government and the musicians, just so that the two can be linked together and right. make it better. Okay, quick one here. Let me just run this information by you real quick. There's a little bit more to chat with uh, Professor Collins about before we bid him adieu. The MBA Tour Africa Conference returns to Accra, Ghana. It's on the mon it's on Monday, the 15th of October, between 5 and 10 p.m. at the Mervyn Pick Ambassador Hotel. If you're interested in enhancing your career pursuing a master's in business administration or master's degree, would you like to know if you qualify for a full or partial scholarship to one of our renowned international business schools? 
then we're inviting you to come meet and network with our U.S., Canadian, and European business school admission directors looking to recruit amazing and exceptional prospects like you. So we would like to see you at the MBA Tour Conference, Monday, 15th October, 5 to 10 p.m. at the Mervyn Pick Ambassador Hotel. You can register for free. Go to the MBATour.com. Again, it's the MBATour.com. The MBA Tour Conference is brought to you by TKC Africa, Business and Financial Times, and media partners Joy FM and Joy Prime. Ecobank Ghana is the only bank to have won the coveted CIMG Bank of the Year Award five times, winning the last three consecutively in 2014, 2015, and 2016. This year, the bank has been elevated to the prestigious Marketing Hall of Fame, which is another first by a bank in Ghana. Alongside this award, the bank has also won the much sought-after CIMG Marketing-Oriented Company in Ghana. Ecobank also wins the 2018 Mobex Africa Innovation Award for Banking Solutions of the Year and Fintech Innovation Bank of the year. We couldn't have achieved all of this without you, our valued and cherished customers, and we'd like to take this opportunity to thank you, to renew our promise to you, to continuously work at improving service delivery and providing innovative and flexible financial products and services to suit your everyday banking needs. We're encouraging everyone to join Ecobank, the winning bank today. Simply download the Ecobank mobile app on the Google Play or the App Store, get connected or visit any of our branches or express points nationwide, and try transact with ease. Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank. Your business and the health of your workers are directly related. The more time your workers spend away from work due to ill health, the less productive they will be to your business. It's really simple. Keep your business's productivity high at all times. Make sure you provide your workers with good health insurance like Acacia Health Insurance. Give your business what it needs with the number one health insurance provider, Acacia. We place value on those you value. Just seven more minutes before we go. Ah, oh, well, we'll just relax and have a quick good one. So, Prof, if you're not playing on your guitar or writing a book, what do you do for hobby? Actually, writing is my hobby. <laughs> yeah, I, I run a museum, though, a highlight museum. Nice. The Batmath Museum. I opened it up in 1990 at my house. Right. And I got a lot of support from, I think I mentioned E.T. Mensa, King Bruce. They mm -hmm. all backed me because mm -hmm. we were panicking that High Life was going to vanish. Right, right. And um, it's open to the public on Fridays and Saturdays at my house. And right. a lot of what I've noticed in the last few years is, is it's a lot of younger people are now coming. Right. It's like this new millennial generation right. is really interested in what their grandparents, what the older generation was doing. doing. Yeah. During the hip life era, right. nobody... Hardly any of them no. came. Only media people exactly. or students. Exactly. But, they, but the hip life musicians mm -hmm. hardly came. Right. But now they're getting to they're their, getting into it. So where children. is it located again? You say it, it's at mm -hmm. Ofanko. It's Ofanko. opposite Taifa Junction near okay. the Moose Sawmills. Right. It's been there for about thirty years. Right. Yeah. Right. And what genres of music do you listen to if you are not listening to high life music? It, well, actually, my favorite music is early Congolese sukus. Interesting. I, yeah. I, I I just love love. 60s, 70s, OK Jazz, you know, Frank, wow. uh, Frank, uh, Franco and uh, Dr. Nico and th that type of music. I also love s s uh, various types of jazz, even various types of classical music. I have nice. quite an eclectic collection. collection. But what I listen to in the radio when I'm in a traffic jam mm -hmm. is Congolese music. music. I see. But not the very recent stuff, the yeah, electronic the stuff. stuff. Yeah, the yeah. old stuff. The old stuff. And um, I wanted to find out, I mean, with all the knowledge of music that you have and uh, throughout your career and everything, when you listen to a, a song, uh, it's just playing and you're just listening in a relaxed mode. Do you listen with a critical ear? You're listening for sudden beats or it's, is it like your brain does it automatically without you just engineering it? You mean like, do I analyze the yes. music? <laughs> um, it, it depends in what, what context, but if often I can just take the music without an analysis. Mm -hmm. um, but other times, because I'm trained to analyze music, I'm looking where the breaks are and where there's modulations. Since, right. um, but my son is like that too. He's picked that up. <laughs> He's, he can't, in fact, he has a trouble listening to a piece of music without analyzing it a lot it, yeah but that's also very helpful if you're if, if you're a musician right you have you can analyze and then you can do the opposite which is to compose mm -hmm. 
-hmm. those two are opposites, Opposite, but yeah. you need to be able to do both. Yeah, to be able to do both, we need to, you know... To compose new works, exactly. you have to be able to analyze as exactly. well. Exactly, exactly. Unless it comes in dreams or spirits. <laughs> Some people, their songs come as dreams or spirits. Right. You know, right. others are not so lucky. Yeah, you just you have to listen carefully and you have to create it from scratch, I guess. And yeah, um, yeah. what is the one thing, um, the, the most courageous thing you've ever done in your life? Oh, my goodness. Uh, you mean physically courageous or, or <laughs> physically. jumping into the water to save somebody or something? I, I really don't Anyone know. Anyone that comes to your mind easily. Um, okay, I can give you one. Okay. Um, I was in my recording studio mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the early 80s with a band that was totally blind. Uh -oh. They came from the Acropong Blind School and mm -hmm. they had a guitar band. Mm -hmm. And I was recording them, in my, and it's, it was in the open air, the studio. Right. And while I was recording them, a white snake came into the recording studio and started to circle the drums. Sugar. And nobody could see except me, so I quickly put my foot up in the air, so I'm really a coward. But <laughs> I kept cool, I didn't say anything. And then the snake, after it, it enjoyed the music, left. And I told the blind guys. This was what had happened. Yeah, and they said, thank God you didn't tell us. <laughs> because they would have panicked, everybody would have panicked. And the something snake, bad would have yeah. happened instead. So yeah. I, I, I'm not sure if that's bravery exactly, because I did lift my feet. <laughs> 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 That's a good one. Anyways, um, in all in all your life, in all the bands that you've played with all these years, what has been some of the amazing lessons that have you you hold dear? Well, one one of them is that the the, the, the communal way of playing that I met with yeah, the guitar bands. Yeah, you mentioned earlier. Yes. Yeah, but but uh, and. What, okay, with the guitar, another thing I loved about guitar bands, which we hardly have today, mm -hmm. is that when you went to playing with a concert party in a village, every single age group was represented, old people to children. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no now when everything is scattered. You know, everything is divided in society. Right. You have music for young people, music for teens, music mm -hmm. for old people. Mm -hmm. But what I met was a different type of musical experience. And, and um, you, th I think where you get that spirit now is in the churches. Right. The gospel music is all ages. Mm -hmm. So the churches have taken up some of this, the positive spiritual values of traditional music making, in a way. They made it communal. Right. But if you go to a hip life show... It's you're, totally it, different. Yeah, yeah. And I don't even go to them, and those people don't even want to see me. <laughs> you, if you see my... There's like age distinctions. <laughs> yeah, age distinctions. And yeah. so on. So Any advice you would have for young people who are playing music these days? Yes, I mean, I, I, I'll give you a, just a general no, uh, uh, advice. Yeah, that, sure. That when human beings learned to speak as human beings about two or 300,000 years ago, um, we didn't just speak, we also sang and gestured. So it's, it's, a, it's a pr one of the primary forms of com human communication. And also, there has been no human society in history or anywhere, anthropology or whatever, that didn't have music. It's absolutely vital part. And it, because it unifies two s several sides of your brain, you know, our brain isn't just a brain. It's got the left and the right and the back and the front. Mm -hmm. Music is just about the only thing that unites all of these at the same time. Okay. Mathematics doesn't. Logic doesn't. It's one side. Even art, visual arts, it's the other side of the brain. But music gets all the parts of the brain. And that's why it improves your IQ, right. your coordination, right. your, and so many aspects. So it's an intellectual toner. Right. So you become more intelligent, mm -hmm. let me put it that way. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Or all-rounded yeah. intelligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they should actually make sure that they're appealing to all those sides of the brain so we can all just, you know, enjoy it. We've got we got to go to our news at midday, but I've got one last question, and we'll make it like in three seconds. Okay. If you had three wishes, what would they be? That's an impossible question. <laughs> in three questions, three minutes or three seconds, I I'm not sure if I can answer that. Okay. Um, Maybe if, if you had one wish for Ghanaian music, what would that wish be? That we get away, we, we, we go back to live music and we don't depend on gadgets so much. We bring back the human spirit into, into, the, into the, music. the music. That's a good way to end it, yeah. Professor Koisi Collins has definitely brought a lot more light to the show this morning. Lots of insights, and you can get more from his book, High Lifetime 3. 
We'll put all the outlets for you so you can go grab one. Many thanks to you for joining us this morning. It's been a pleasure chatting with you and I wish I had five hours, which I don't, but you know, <laughs> maybe we'll go to part two of this conversation. Do have a good one. Thank okay. you for coming by and God bless all the best with your new book. My